Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folks Pro. Today is going to be something very different. Well, this series is going to be something very different to our normal electronics theme. Um, I thought I would have a look at uh, my piano. This is my piano. I've had this since I was oh, about nine years old. Eight, nine years old. I am now 44, so yeah, it's quite a, a long time. And um, I started doing some remodeling on my house a few years back and whatever. And all this was packed into the spare bedroom and the other day my geezer went. So of course they had to come and redo some of the ceiling work and those things. And um, so they cleaned up the certain of the bedroom carpets downstairs and whatever and replace ceiling boards but to do that they had to move the piano back and I thought I'd have a a little bit of a play I know it hasn't been tuned in years I have not had this piano tuned as an adult and I know uh, that there is a lot more wrong with it than that uh, a full disclaimer I am not a piano technician so please I, I am not a piano ticket. When I got my piano back into the lounge, I had a little bit of a, a play, and of course there's a lot wrong with it, and uh, I tried to get hold of uh, some people that could tune the piano, and obviously living in uh, Gauteng, uh, and uh, over the years these people are now not around anymore or uh, the people that are advertising are not advertising for me in detail for probably what I'm looking for. Now I am quite handy with my hands, uh, I am quite good with woodwork and I believe I can do a lot of the tasks, I am not stupid, I have done my homework and looked at this so I'm not insulting uh, piano technicians out there, I just can't get my hands on one in Kharteng. Um a lot of what we will have to do to restore this piano is is going to be working with your hands. Anyway, I it's a Paul Newman upright. I don't know what year. Like I said, I've had it. I'm 44. I've had it since I was about eight, nine years old. So yeah, I've had it uh, quite a few decades. And as an adult, since I stopped playing, and I stopped playing when I well performing when I was in high school, but I stopped playing completely when I left home. Um, so I haven't played in years, and I know my parents have not had this tuned. So I'm going to just play a little bit uh, to give you an idea. So if you can hear that, that's the sustained piano. So that's squeaking in its, in its, in its murrain. So I'm going to butcher this, this, I'm not, I'm going to play the right keys, but I want to give you an idea of what the piano is doing and then we'll take off this top end and we will have a look at it. I'm not going to mic the piano or anything like that uh, because it, there's no point, it is horrible. So we'll take a, some songs that you would know and uh, with, with varying uh, tempo and it will give you an idea. So. First of all, you know that it's completely out of tune. So we looked at... So we can already hear that I've got dying notes. I think. Ability is, is very horrible. The action is is hard. I'm having to put a lot of force into play something where I would just normally just touch it. I'm really having to put force into it. Um, 
Uh, let's see. I don't know if I want to kill this, but anyway. So yeah, that is just terrible. I mean, the the force needed, the, the keys are on the to apply the keys is very horrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and we'll set the camera up and I'll actually show you what is happening in the piano and what we need to address. Right, so now we have the uh, top board off and I've taken off the, the piano lid. This uh, little board here, very loose, is just a holder that keeps our keys down. And you can see it's very, very dirty and grimy in here. But to give you an idea of what's happening, I'm going to try and play around the the camera that's between my legs. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it anyway. So if we look at the first song ballad for Ada Lang. So you can see I'm playing. The hammer is going forward and hitting. Uh, let's just move it up a little bit. So you can see the hammer goes up and falls back. But you can see it's very lazy. I'm going to push the key down slowly. Never mind that the hammers are not all parallel to each other. It looks almost like it's rubbing, but it's not. So the hammers, you can see that one and that one, the gap is huge. Uh, this one looks like it's turned into that one, but anyway. I'm going to push it very slowly and look how lazy it falls back. Let's take a key next to it, push it slowly and you see also that one is just... <laughs> so they're falling back very lazy and I can feel clicks in the keys, which is not good. So anyway, let's try that around the piano. see what happened to our D hammer. It just stayed there. And there it just stays. So we have sticking hammers, we have sticking, uh, we have some funny things going on here. I don't know if you can hear it. It's almost like a click. I can't play the notes, well, I can't play all of the notes really, really fast. The, the repetition is horrible. So I can't just go and tune, if I pull this up a little bit, I can't just go and tune uh, the soundboard for, for the keys. And what you'll notice is a lot of strings have, uh, especially in this section here, let's call that the tenor section the mid section, they will have three strings, uh, then it's split, and if we go to the right again, we'll have our, our treble section, which will also have three strings mainly, and then we have our bass section, where we mainly have two strings, and the very low notes, the low, the low A, B, B flat, uh, B, um, one string each. I'm not going to hit, but you hear that without hitting the that that rattling going on in there. So we have issues. Um, we also have issues with the sustain. That's our piano key, our damper. Uh, to make it softer and that doesn't look if I look at the movement there 
versus the movement down here. That doesn't look uniform. If I look over the top for the actual the actual dampening okay it's crunching but what is interesting is that the the damper the, well the dampers themselves the each individual damper is not moving uh, uniformly We have a lot of dirt in, in here that I don't think is half, is even part of the problem. I think, well, obviously I need to restore this thing somehow, but I, I can't uh, take it to a technician and we need to start somewhere. So this whole thing here in the middle of the piano is called the action of the piano. Now, like a guitar, it is the feel. So when if I press uh, C, middle C, I'm only going to press middle C around the, the key here, you have a, a few things. You have the takeoff of when I actually press the key before the, the hammer starts moving. Now you can see in this case, there is no the, 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 the hammer takes away straight away. Let's try another one. That one's sticking. You know, so there's, they are taking away almost immediately. Now, if we watch that hammer from middle C, you'll see I'm going to press it slowly all the way until it falls back. And that's quite a, a huge gap from the string. If I have to guess and look at it, I'm going to say that's going to be almost a good a good 25 mil, almost a good inch, which doesn't seem right. So I'm guessing Part of this is going to be the alignment, in other words, to get the blow. And the blow is uh, this part of the hammer. How much has it got to travel to hit that string? Uh, I think the more travel that it's got, uh, the more force you have. But I think that can also become conversely a problem. Now you see, these are not all four all falling back the same distance either. So I suspect a lot of our problem is going to lie here. What I do see is all of these wires, uh, apparently they are called bridle wires, these uh, metal wires all look fine and there's like little cloth leather strappy things on that are attached to them and they don't look like any of them are broken they also look fine there are little let's see if we can get underneath here and we'll zoom in a little bit i'll just take the water focus off Let's get to the right side. Okay, so we can see our bridle straps and underneath there, there's um, little stoppers. And if I try and, let's see if I'm playing one in your sight. Let's get to another, we'll go to E, that's right on the end. Okay, so when I'm playing, the key, the key is lifting this mechanism and there's little stoppers that are being made and these are also holding the, 
these end stops are holding the fallback position of that hammer. The other thing that we that I notice if I just zoom out again if you look at these hammers they're not all parallel and they're not all angled at the, at, at the same angle some are tilted more others less so that could be a problem that we have why some of these uh, hammers are actually rubbing and catching also the distance between the hammers is not all equal so we'll have to to fix that if I look at the keys what I'm let me just move this back I'm going to just come out a little bit and show you what I'm looking at so let me just restart this or make another clip, otherwise they get too long to edit. Right, forget that the keys are dirty. That I'm, that's an easy, an easy fix. If I feel over the top of the keys, I'm, in other words, I'm feeling the key, uh, the height, are they all roughly equal? And pretty much they are. There's one or two that is out. But the key height all seems to be pretty much the same. They all, with exception one or two out, they all appear to have the same gap between the keys. And they don't move excessively if I rub across them. So I don't think there's too much work here. What I will have to do is go through each one and see that stop or depress gap is it the same for all of them and uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem so I don't suspect too much work here under the keyboard um, what I can do is we'll take this bar off and we will take a key out and have a look at it so let me just get a screwdriver okay I've taken off the keyboard lock for want of a better word yeah, there's a little bit of dust and paper and things in here and what we can see is we've got a, a pin over here which looks like a, a balancing pin I'm just gonna lift this key out and we can see yeah there's a lot of grime and dust and things and the uh, the keys have got numbers on which is very nice so that means I can take the keys out all in one go because I know which one must go back where and notice when I took the key out I didn't try and tilt it or whatever I lifted it out and what we can see is in there is some felt now whether it's worn or not i wouldn't know i think if i look at these pins yeah they are very dirty and that could be part of the problem because that middle pin over there is actually our balance pin so the piano key pivots like this so that is uh, part of the problem down here we have uh, some felt bushing and that would obviously set the height of the key so that we can depress it so far and no more and again it's on a pin and the pin feels a little bit rough and that will sit in that bushing there so that can all contribute to the the hardness of the of the of the playing i'm not going to put it back what i can see underneath here is a lot of uh, let's take another one out a lot of uh, dust and stuff yeah this is really not not nice 
And what I can see with some of these felts, if they lose, and I think this is a, yeah, I'm going to say, there's a little screw in there. And that screw has obviously got to sit against this uh, part of the, this mechanism up here. I think it's called a whippin. I think this is called the capstan screw. So this will set um, when that will start to lift and do its thing. Interestingly enough, you can't really see from this angle. I'm going to try and move you a bit closer. Is these stops. These are all stops over here. Some of them are not aligned nicely with uh, the bottom of this hammer. So the bottom of the hammer and that uh, stop there are not aligned nicely. Uh, some of them are off to the right, some of them are off to the left, and some of them are uh, not parallel. They're actually, you know, off. The, so it's not a face-to-face -face, uh, meet. So I think that is also going to be a a huge uh, issue. Well, uh, part of the, uh, the the mess causing our problem. Uh, if I look at the back of the heads or the hammers themselves, so I'm looking at that face of the hammer. Uh, yes, I have played this piano quite um, hard. <laughs> um, so what you see on the hammer, if you looked at the hammer face, is you actually see little indents where my knuckle, or yeah, where my fingers and knuckles are. So the hammer face would look something like that, more or less rounded. But there are indents in the front of the face where the strings have been hit over and over and over again. So those are definitely going to have to be, yeah, if I feel them, oh, they are going to be have to be re redone, refinished. The damper If I look at the damper, they don't actually look bad at all. Um, uh, the majority of them look very good. What is interesting to note, so all the bass has got uh, dampers on. And all your tenor here in the middle. And only about one half of your treble over here has actually got a damper. These uh, strings up here, uh, they don't actually have this sustain. Uh, yeah, so they don't actually have those, well, dampers, the sustain dampers on them. Um, yeah, so there's there's a bit of work. These felts underneath here are quite uh, what I'm looking at is where I've taken these keys out where the, these uh, uh, at the back end where these uh, uh, keys would rest on that part of the key there. There's a felt in there and they are pretty uh, thick still. Uh, the felt at the top here where the, the hammers fall back, yes, there's indents from the hammer shaft or shank, I think they call it. And the hammer bounces off. seem to bounce off the same amount, so I'm guessing that should be alright. 
So I don't want to make this video too long. What we know is we need to do a lot of work and uh, there's quite a bit of a, a journey ahead of us. A very sad day. Uh, that it, but I, I'm pretty sure that we can um, we can bring this piano back to playability and I think uh, to to a very good uh, level of playability. I know it's not going to be a uh, concert grand or anything like that and that's not the issue. The issue is I would like it to play as well as it possibly can and uh, you know as, as best as it can for uh, for what I want, uh, I, you know, it's my own fault for letting it go this far and not keeping it in tune and whatever, but these uh, things happen. By the way, this whole cradle here at the back, this is known as the action, so we, we haven't chatted much about it, I don't, I'm not an expert on it, but this is, this cradle is the thing that all the hammers are there, this weapon assembly, this thing underneath here, and all that goes together and I've actually watched quite a few videos on it there's not much to it it's the, the engineering behind it is fantastic the, the, the thinking that the, the, the guys that made the piano came up with is is really very very clever so yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first step is I'm going to take this action out because it doesn't help we do anything here until you know, on the keyboard side, until the action is 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 sorted out. So, and I suspect we're going to need to take this out. Well, I know we're going to have to take it out to to get uh, these uh, heads, uh, the hammers themselves uh, uh, polished properly. I hope it's polished. I don't know what you, what else you would call it. So, what my first uh, plan of attack for this, if I think of this while I'm planning this, is I will take the action out, we will sort out, and we'll do this, in, you know, together, so, so we can have a journey together. Um, my first uh, attack is to get all of these hammers uh, exactly parallel the way they should be, the same uh, height, because I think they must be the same height. So yeah, and the right angle, the right tilt. So that's that's the first thing because I think if we if we sort that out, then that would take care that the string, if you look at the hammer, that it hits the strings evenly because that one doesn't even look like it's hitting them evenly. It looks like it's hitting yeah just on the edge. So the idea is to get them to all strike evenly and be parallel, and I think that will take care of a lot of our a lot of our problems. So first step is to to take this out. I will, and we'll make a video on how we set these hammers that they are all parallel. It doesn't look like any of the hammer shanks have been damaged or anything like that. So that's. That's always a good, a good sign because I actually thought that I had maybe cracked one of these little shanks at the back. Uh, you can see uh, that spar that goes that, that down there. That goes all the way into that part down there. So that is the hammer shank. So I thought I damaged a few of those. The big thing that I can see is a lot of these are not are not like if we look at that stop there that's quite far back compared to the other stops none of the other stops are that far back and uh, I think a lot of it's going to be shaping this head getting these all to take off at the, at the right point and to stop at the right point and to return to the right point so I'm going to leave it there and uh, 
I think this is going to be a rather interesting journey together. As always, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Take care, be safe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.